Hello, in this video we're going to look at the price discrimination strategy of block pricing. So imagine a firm faces the following inverse demand curve. Price equals 100 minus Q. The firm has marginal cost that is constant at $25. And this firm is going to use two pricing blocks. So the first thing we're going to do is going to write the inverse demand for each pricing block. This is going to be the, the price this is going to be the price charged on the first block on the first block which just consists of Q1 units. Okay, and then the price charged on the second block is going to be given by P subscript 2 equals 100 minus Q subscript 2. So this is going to be the price charged on the second block. And the second block, I'll write it down here, is Q2 minus Q1 units of output. Let's take a look at this, I guess uh, might help graphically. So go ahead and graph our inverse demand. We got some constant marginal cost here. So we're going to set a price for our first block, and that's going to and that's going to be P subscript one for all units purchased after Q subscript one. We're going to charge consumers a lower price, P subscript two. So the number of units that get charged this lower price is just this difference right here. Q2 minus Q1. So that is the size of the second block. Okay, so now let's uh, maximize profits given this strategy of setting two price blocks. Let me get a clean sheet. Okay, so let's figure out the revenue of the first block. Okay, the revenue of the first block is just going to be price times quantity, where the price of the first block was given in the previous screen as 100 minus Q1 times Q1, and we're just going to simplify that up. to get this result. Okay, the revenue on the second block. So the revenue for the second block is going to be the price charge on the second block times the number of units sold in the second block. And as I tried to illustrate with our demand curve on the previous screen, the number of units in the second block comprises Q2 minus Q1. So making some substitutions here. Okay, so all I did was I plugged in from the previous screen 100 minus Q2 and then we're multiplying it by the quantity in the second block. Simplifying this,
we're left with this expression. So what we're going to do now is set up the firm's profit function. Call it pi. So this is the firm's profit. And it's just going to equal revenue in the first block. plus revenue in the second block minus total cost. So now just filling in what we have for the revenue. We get the revenue from the first block plus the revenue from the second block. And then we have to subtract out total cost. And if you recall from the first page, we said marginal cost is 25. So that means total cost is going to be 25 times Q. But which Q? Well, Q subscript 2. This is the total output being produced by the firm. the total output being produced by the firm is given by Q subscript 2. And now we have that profit expression. Okay, let me scroll down a little bit. Alright, so now we want to maximize profit. Uh, we're going to do this by taking two partial derivatives, one with respect to Q subscript 1, the other partial derivative with respect to Q subscript 2. So here we get 100 minus 2 Q subscript 1 minus 100 plus Q subscript 2. We've got to set this result equal to 0. Okay. So the, the first 100 comes from here. This minus 2q subscript 1 is coming from that expression, the partial derivative of that. This minus 100 is coming from the partial derivative of that expression. And then finally, this q subscript 2 is coming from the partial derivative of this expression with respect to q subscript 1. Uh, we can simplify this slightly. Um, we can get Q2, Q subscript 2 equals 2 times Q subscript 1 as these hundreds cancel. And I'll just circle that because we'll come back to that in a minute. Take one more partial derivative, this time with respect to Q subscript 2 and we're going to get this result. Okay, so it's take a minute to show you where these values are coming from. So this 100 is coming from the partial derivative of the profit function with respect to Q subscript 2. So this term over here gives us the 100 bringing the two down in front over here is where this minus two q subscript two is coming from the partial derivative of this expression with respect to q subscript two just leaves us q subscript one and then finally the partial derivative of minus twenty five q subscript two is just minus twenty five simplifying this slightly solving for um, Q subscript 1 we get minus 75 plus 2 Q subscript 2 and let me highlight that so what we're left with is two equations and two unknowns. 
So I'm just going to substitute one expression into the other. So this minus 75 plus 2q2, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug that in over here. Okay, doing that, we're going to get minus 150 on the right-hand side, plus 4q subscript 2. This will simplify down to 3q subscript 2 equals 150. So q subscript 2 is going to be 50 units. Okay, so in total the firm produces 50 units of output. And let's get uh, Q subscript 1. Take this 50, plug it into this expression. Equals 25. So the first block, the first block uh, will consist of um, uh, up to 25 units. And now let's get the prices. So the first 25 units of output will sell for $75 a piece. Beyond that, in the second block, consumers will face a price of $50 each. And that is the problem. I hope you found this helpful.